In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to paint the mountains and reflections in this Milky Way painting that we've been working on. Hey, what's up? I'm going to show you how I get details in my mountains and my reflections. If you like to improve your artwork, start now by hitting that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss anything. Although I'm going to be working with my oil paints today, everything I do can also be done in acrylics. So grab your paintbrush and let's go paint. Last week we painted the canvas black, so right now I'm going to fill this in with white using my acrylic paint. And I've done a rough sketch with white charcoal pencil so I can clearly see where everything is going to be placed. I'm just adding a little bit of blue in with the white. I use acrylic paint just because it dries faster, allowing me to get started on the details right away. And more of this purple. We want the snow to be brighter than the rest of the painting because snow is very reflective, so it's gonna bounce the Milky Way colors off of it. In order to achieve that brightness that we want, we have to have a lighter base to work with. I'm using a size 12 filbert brush and all of my supplies will be linked below. When you create snow banks, rolling hills, mountains, anything like that that has directions, when you add your layers, make sure to go in the direction the ground is sloping. So in this case with the snow banks on the right, I'm gonna start at the back which is a flatter area so I keep my brush strokes more horizontal and the closer I get to the water, I take my brush and I brush it down almost to a vertical stroke. What that does is it creates the highlights and the shadows in the right direction. So it's less work for me to have to try and get that point across. It automatically looks like it's a sloping snowbank just because the way I'm forming the highlights and the shadows. Now we're just going to get the rest of the mountains painted in. If you missed the video where I painted the Milky Way, I'll have a card pop up right here. I'm going to start working on the details in the mountain. And I started to add the rock formation on the left mountain and then I realized that I needed to get the base color of the mountain down first. I'm starting off by just using a small little filbert brush and I'm taking the colors that we used in the Milky Way, particularly the outer colors that are a little darker for the shadows and I'm using those bright blues and purples that we used in the inner part of the Milky Way to lay down the highlights right here on this snow bank. Now after I lay them down, I go ahead and I smooth out the edges of where they're at. And if you watch my wrist, I'm curving my strokes to form the snow bank. The angle of the way the snow bank is dipping down into the water. The way that happens is the way you form your strokes. So I'm just making that little arch and that will create the highlights and the shadows in that direction, automatically forming that slope for me. So I don't have to do a lot of work to get those details in there.
In order to show where the snowbank ends and where the lake begins, we're going to add this deep purple color here which is going to act as a shadow and a reflection to show where these two elements separate. This is where I decided to wipe off that that I've already done and work on the base color underneath the mountain. I'm taking the colors from the Milky Way and I'm adding them to the mountain and the snowbank just to try and figure out where the highlights and shadows are going to be. If the Milky Way is a little bit behind and above these mountains, the shadows and highlights have to be placed correctly to show where the main light is coming from. That will also make the sky glow more. I'm creating a lot of lighter details using light, the light pinks and light purples, and the shadows are created using the dark blues and purples. And if you pay attention which direction my lines are going, that plays a big role in convincing the viewer 
that this is a mountainside. Then we're going to lightly blend everything and start adding the rocks and all the small little details so you can get a sense of how the mountains form. I start modeling mountains like this the way the lines go can create all the detail if you create a line going down and to the right and a different line going down and to the left you can create this sharp point like we have right here and that will start to form a mountain peak If you want more of a flatter terrain, you're going to want to make your lines more at a horizontal angle like I have right here. I zoomed in so you can see more of the details of how I'm doing this. I want you to pay attention to the way the lines are going. Another really important thing is you're going to want some small dots and lines to show some imperfections, maybe where the rock or the ground is showing through. And then you're going to want some bigger, darker areas that show us bigger rocks in that area. You want to break it up so there isn't an unnatural pattern. You want some areas to have a lot of little imperfections and a lot of little rocks and then you want some areas to have those big rocks. We also add a dark line at the base of the mountain just to show where the mountain and the snowbank are separated. And if you want to see all of this in real time, I have both of these videos on my Patreon page, which I will link in the description below. So if you're a beginner painter and you are staring at this mountain and you're just wondering how do I figure out where to put these rocks to make them look believable, look realistic, start by just adding a little dot or two in the darkest part of your mountain that you created in the base layer. When you work with just doing something small, then you can start to spread out around it and create smaller or bigger rocks around the ones that you've already done and you'll be able to start to see something form. And you just build on top of that. But try and stick to the darker areas because that's where your shadows are already located and we don't want to take away all the highlights that we already established. Now that we have all of the 
imperfections, the rocks down on the mountain, I'm going to start to add some highlights in just a certain areas to show where the Milky Way is glowing from. And that's going to be bouncing off of the snow. After I add the highlights with one brush, I go in with a dry brush and I smooth the edges out and push the paint around to where the highlights look the best. And I normally like to go in the next day and add the highlights just because that gives all the rocks and imperfections that we laid down, that gives them a nice 24 hours to dry so I'm not trying to work around them and then end up blending all my rocks out. Make sure to add the highlights to the reflections as well so that doesn't look weird. Now again with the reflections that the Milky Way and the mountains are playing in the water, water is going to be horizontal. It is naturally leveling. So what I mean by that is everything in the water is going to mostly have horizontal lines unless you have like very flowing water or a wave then you get into other dimensions within water but for a lake like this that is very calm and there's not going to be any ripples we're going to keep a lot of the lines very horizontal in order to do that I'm going to take some of the colors that we used already, so the blues, the pinks, the dark reds, and I'm going to create horizontal lines that come off of the reflection that we've already made. And they're not going to be very big lines. They're just tiny little strokes and that is going to create this illusion that this is a reflection. And honestly, if I was smart enough, I would have remembered to do this when the paint was still wet and you could just go in with a stiff brush like a fan brush and very lightly just swoosh your fan brush across horizontally across all of these and that would have created a bunch of horizontal lines back and forth that would have the same effect instead of having to remix the colors and go back over when it's dry and blend them in the way that we did. <laughs> but the thing about painting is you are always learning in Every single painting that I do, I always learn something. We also need to start showing some imperfections in the snowbank and that will help create realism. So we're going to add little bushes like I've done over here. We're also going to add a little bit of the ground showing through and rocks just like we did in the mountains to help create the sloping of the ground as well just like we did with the mountains. Now 
Now, because there is highlights going on everywhere else, we can't forget the highlights on the bushes and all of the little grass that we made. So all I'm doing now is just taking a lighter color of that grass and I'm just adding it to the tips of the bushes and the grass blades. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button and let me know what was your favorite part in the comments below. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye guys.